we get into that, how exciting is it for you to have been in the, the WEC, the WEC now merged with the UFC, how exciting is it to get to perform in front of these gigantic crowds and to finally be recognized as a UFC champ? Slay anymore that I, uh, I fight the best guys in the world. I mean, I'm in the UFC now, but I get to fight for all these awesome fans. The UFC has the best fans in the world. Canada has been great to me. Um, you know, I'm recognized here more than I'm in the States sometimes. It's been awesome, and everybody's been great. Yeah, I've noticed that. I think Canada per capita has many more MMA fans than the United States. Do you know what I'm saying? And speaking of Canadians, Mr. Mark Hominick will be fighting Jose Aldo tomorrow night for the Fenway Championship of the World. Mr. Aldo, you, you look very serious. I know you're, you're drained out for the waves right now. Can you get ready? I didn't want to. This is uh, translated. Um, tell us about tomorrow night. You have a huge fight against Mark Hominick. Give us your thoughts on that fight, what it's going to be like to fight here in front of 55,000 people. C'est ótimo, né? Eu, eu gosto disso, eu gosto dessa emoção, mas o mais triste para mim é melhor, então é ótimo. Eu pretendo um outro evento que esteja muito mais que 55 mil pessoas. Ele se sentiu bem, ele espera que ele vai ver um pack house tomorrow night, e ele espera que todos os eventos no futuro são apenas um pack house tomorrow. Bom, eu não sei o que é isso, certo? Isso é o maior evento. Bom, Frankie Edgar, obviamente, uma grande luta contra o Frankie Edgar.
pessoas que não têm respeito, o Tio Show, não você estava perdendo quatro rounds, e como você achou ah, para ir no quinto round, e como você se sentiu depois que você encaixou o triângulo? Uh, the fight is shallow, I, I, I broke my ears, but the, I talked to my, 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 my master, uh, Rodrigo Nogueira, and I said, hey, master, I finished the fight, I put the, 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 the guy in the ground, I finished. This is for my, my, my the fight, the finish, the, the, the show sold it, this is for my, my family, the team of the air. I'm the black belt, I'm all the time, I respect my goals. I respect my family. Now, you are, in many people's opinion, the top pound for pound fighter in the world. You have uh, fought twice at 205 pounds. And there has been talk of a potential possible super fight with another man, the man to your right, Mr. John Jones, the UFC light heavyweight champion. What are, what are your thoughts about possibly fighting against a fighter again?
you know, I said, you know, I would never want to have to fight him. He was so close. I said, I would never have to want to have to fight him. But obviously, if they had made this fight, he would have shot one of those guys. I would That's why I stated it. But the, the basis of what I was saying was that I didn't want to have to fight him. And he took it for whatever it was, for his own mind. As friends, though, isn't it weird that you guys didn't have a conversation, you know, about that? Instead, he went to the press, and, you know, I mean, how did you feel about that? And all of a sudden, he was reacting to it, and yeah. he didn't call you up and say, right. what's up? Right. I guess the biggest thing that made people sense is that I didn't call him the right way, like, know that I had an interview about him. But I figured that, you know, what I said on the interview, or one, is something that I would say to his face. And um, he didn't take it very well. So now you're in this weird situation. He called you a swagger jacket. Will you tell me what that means? Uh, Kane raised his eyebrow. You don't know what he is? Okay. Dominic, get that in. Swagger jacket. All right, guys. So talk you know what that is? I don't know what that is. OK, so all the things you guys are familiar with the term swagger. Swagger is basically what makes you like sexy and what makes you you, you know? And uh, it's an old thing, baby. But, uh, Anyways, um, so we had the stylists, and like, whenever we had really big events going on, they sent us to uh, you know, look good, our best. And I think I was sent to the same exact stylist, and uh, I ended up wearing um, the same shirt, the same suit, and the same tie the shower wore uh, like a year earlier. And so I show up on Jay Little with this suit on, and uh, he sees the suit, and he's like, oh, you copy my style, and all that, which was totally intentional, well, not intentional, so. A little embarrassing. So that's it? Just the suit? That makes you a swagger jacker? Exactly, I guess so. I have my own swagger. You, you guys, guys like the Johnny Bones swag? <laughs> now, this is a speculation as well about, you know, you're only 23 years old, you're growing in your body, and I know you walk around sometimes about like 230 somewhere. Like there's just some talk about you possibly potentially moving up to heavyweight one day. You think we're going to see that? Yo, Joe, so why are you trying to start all this trouble? I'm not talking about trouble! I got 40 minutes to ask questions! Uh, um, I am really young. I am really young, but um, cutaways have actually become a lot more easy for me. Uh, I have a really good nutritionist and, and fitness program, and I've actually been making weight easier, and I've seen my own fights that my body's starting to go better and better um, as I'm growing. And so, so, um... So, <laughs> um... So um, I, have, I have, have many years, years left in the fight division, um, but you know, you, you never know what the future holds. Speaking of heavyweights, the heavyweight champion of the world, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cain Velasquez. Cain, <laughs> obviously, you had a spectacular performance of winning the title against Brock Lesnar, but unfortunately for you and for the fans, you've had a shoulder injury you've been dealing with since then. Tell us about that and how that's going. Um, you know, of course, right now where I'm at is. Um, I see the doctor this week coming up, and he healed clear me, and then I can start training again, get, get me back in, you know, it's, it's been hard to be out this this long. Um, for me, you know, my dream job is to work out for a living, and to not be able to do that, it's, it's tough, but, uh, you know, I just want to get this, this done so I can come back and uh, fight for the fans. What is the nature of the injury? Um, I, I had a, a torn uh, leg ramp. And uh, they attacked it. Uh, it takes long because the shoulder is like not a lot of blood to get to the shoulder. So it takes long, a while for it to heal. So and how long has it been since your surgery? Surgery, uh, I guess surgery early January. Now, a lot of people don't realize the shoulder is one of the most complicated joints to fix because it's so mobile, it has so many different directions it goes in. What is the rehab like for this and how, how uh, time consuming is it? The rehab is uh, just, you know, getting the arm strength back right now. Um, the motion, I have all the motion now. Like the, the last time I saw the doctor, he was really impressed with where my motion was compared to um, how far back I got surgery. So I'm, 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 really, uh, I'm really happy for that. I'm happy that he has the best doctors that they can you know, they look at us. Uh, yeah. Now, coming from this injury, uh, how concerned do you have to be to make sure that you don't re injure it in the process of building back your strength and conditioning? You're known for being one of the most conditioned fighters in any weight class and the most conditioned heavyweight. Do you have to uh, concern yourself with that as you ramp yourself back up into high intensity training? For me, it's all about listening to the doctor, what he says. You know, have all faith in him when he says 100%, then. I'll do that, you know, I have all the faith in uh, the doctors that, that, that the UFC provides, so once it's done, I'm ready to go. Well, we, we have, have a, a very interesting situation now that the UFC has acquired Strikeforce, and uh, you have the opportunity now to possibly face 
uh, an amazing group of talent that they have over there right now competing in the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix. Give us your thoughts on that and the Grand Prix itself. And what do you think about some of the opponents? Alistair Overeem, Verdun, all those guys over there. Uh, all those guys are great, you know, top level guys. A lot of the U.S. is finally all you know, you know, lay down the road, match up with the others. So, can, so the fans and me you know, can have a true number one champion. I want to fight the best guys, those guys are the best guys too, but right now I want to focus on, you know, Fede Stedin, Brock Los Santos. Now, that's an interesting situation as well. Junior Dos Santos is slated to fight Brock Lesnar in June for uh, uh, the number one contender position. Now, how do you feel about that? You know, you know having to just take care of Brock Lesnar so easily, and then Brock Lesnar facing Dos Santos if he wins, gets another shot at your title. You know, um, the kind of competitor that he is, you know, he's always going to get a better guy, you know, a better Brock Lesnar, he's going to keep improving, just like all these guys are. Everybody in the sport is a keep evolving, the sport is a keep evolving, so you never, you know, you never take any lightly at all, never. Do you have any other, do you feel like any additional weight on your shoulders, being that you're not just the first Mexican heavyweight champion in MMA, you're the first Mexican heavyweight champion in all the combat sports, and that is a huge, huge accomplishment for such a fight fan community. What is that like? Well, first of all, you know, it's, um, my job is simple, is to go out and train and go out and win. That's all I think about. Um, I don't listen to the hype. You can't buy into the hype. Um, I don't listen to what people say whether it's good or bad, or, or whether it's good or bad. I just got to do my job. I got to keep moving, keep, uh, keep training. Now, uh, speaking of the exciting and uh, incredible fights that are upcoming, you're facing your Ryan Faber uh, upcoming for your title, the 135 pound title of the world. Give us your thoughts on that fight. You guys have fought previously. He caught you in the guillotine in the first round. What, what do you think is going to be different about this fight? Because your thoughts about Uriah as an opponent. Uh, you know, me and Uriah have our differences. I don't think it's really a secret. Um, you know, he's done a lot of videos on YouTube and whatnot that kind of uh, made me a little angry. And I've done, I've said some stuff about him that's made him a little angry. And uh, we pretty much can't wait to punch each other in the face when it comes down to it. And uh, it's going to be a great fight for the fans. It's a lot of fun, you know? Well, you have improved dramatically since that fight. It was about five years ago, that fight. Uh, four years ago, and Uriah has as well. What do you think is the difference uh, between you from back then when you fought him and you now? Well, everything, in my opinion. I think I've improved everywhere. You know, I was, uh, that was my first fight at WAC, and um, you know, I was, uh, that was the first time I ever had a training camp ever in my career before that fight. No excuse to be fair and square. Bottom line is I want to go back and get that loss back because I had lost since. And, um, you know, that's the, that's the guy to beat in my weight class right now uh, because, you know, a lot of people think that uh, he beat me, so he beat me again, and I want to prove that he can, you know. And really, the only people he's lost to have struck him, and uh, he couldn't take me down. And you know what? He's not going to take me down, and he cannot strike me, so I'm excited for the fight. One of the most exciting weight classes in the sport, folks, 135 pounds. Very, very exciting fight. Speaking of excited weight classes, now the lightweight division of the WEC has entered into the UFC, and of course, with the acquisition of Strike Force, there's also opportunities to fight guys like Gilbert Melendez, Shunsuke Aoki. Tell us, Frankie, how do you feel being the UFC lightweight champion and seeing all these awesome potential fights on the horizon for you? Yeah, you know, I think uh, 55 pound division was influenced most by the acquisition of uh, Strike Force and merger of WEC, and especially being a champion. Uh, you know, to have all these guys that are on top of the heat that I could fight before that I possibly can is just, uh, it's exciting. You know, it definitely gives you more motivation in the gym. Um, you know, I still think there's a long list of guys that are in UFC that were in UFC that, that are still contenders as well. So, I don't think I'm going to run out of uh, opponents. Well, when it comes to opponents in the uh, strike force division that people are interested in seeing you fight, one comes to mind, and that is Kong Lee. And a lot of people think that would be a very intriguing fight between two of the most dynamic strikers in the sport. How do you feel about a potential fight with Mr. Lee? Very exciting. It's for a long time, the guys talk to I'm fighting with Kong Lee. I'm back to my, my, my academy for my, my goals, my family, my goals training. I'm begging you for the fight. Let's see it. John Jones, obviously there's uh, fighters for you in Strikeforce. Uh, Dan Henderson comes to mind, the uh, Strikeforce like heavyweight champion. Do you see yourself possibly seeing uh, one of those guys down the line? Faye Zhao, Henderson, maybe even possibly Fedor? 
Is, is that, that the fight that you should be the most? Uh, yeah, that would be the fight that you should be the most. You know, I admire Fedor a lot, and uh, that would be a great age to where I'm at um, in my career. Yeah. But um, as far as that fight, yeah, I would love that fight as well. Uh, two, two legends. legends. Yeah, yeah, not just trying to call them up, but I, I would be honored to fight you one of them. Now, now Kane Velasquez, if you had to pick one fight that you think would be your dream fight in the heavyweight division, what would that be? Ladies and gentlemen, we've had an awesome opportunity to sit down here with seven of the very best fighters.